MFG Productions. I was organized. I had my own plan. My mom and daddy probably didn't even know half of the stuff that was in my mind mm -hmm. that I was doing. And they don't know what probably was going on, but I was moving and and you would have to probably talk to them and ask, but <laughs> I was just doing stuff. They just know I come to them and say, I'm finna do this. And they just be looking at me like, oh, Lord, what's she finna do now? <laughs> <laughs> well, it paid off eventually. And uh, see, see, you mentioned something about if you can do it, then anybody can do it. And, you know, I, I feel like a lot of us tend to, especially like with, this generation, I feel like we are a whole lot weaker mentally than your generation. Uh, mentally, we're just piss poor weak. And I see that you mentioned, you know, inspiration like, yeah, I did this at a time like this. You know, you guys can do it too. And it's just like, I feel like <clears throat> that's something that should always be talked about and reference like you know you guys made it through and you guys were able to do it because the start of something is always the scariest and it's just like because it's the fear of the unknown nobody knows exactly what's going to happen nobody knows how it's going to work out and it's just the fear of being too comfortable this is comfortability like you don't want to venture out and do it so for you uh did you have any fear about failing in something that you were in, in these things because you at a young age you did a lot so it was was fear ever a factor for you no when i was i think that most people lack fear when you're young mm. because i think you're young and rambunctious and some of us are young and dumb yeah. and we move fast and we don't think yeah and we just feel um, almost immortal, like we can do anything. Mm -hmm. And at that time, when I think back, that's how I was. I thought that I could do anything. Mm -hmm. I had, I didn't even think about failing. I just did it. Mm -hmm. um, now that I'm older, I think that's when fear starts to creep in. Mm -hmm. Because you have so much more responsibility. Yeah. Um, back then, I was young, living with my mom. I didn't have to worry about it failing, so I didn't think about it. Mm -hmm. Now that I'm older, I have more responsibility, mm -hmm. so I, I I almost feel as though I can't fail. Yeah. So I have to be more cautious on what I decide to chase after and how I do it. Um, and a lot of people be like, "Oh, don't give up on your dream," you know, "Go after your dream." Mm -hmm. There came a time in my life where I let my dreams go. Yeah. Because I had responsibilities. Yeah. And I had to raise, I decided, I made the choice yeah. to have children. Nobody made me. That was my choice. Yeah. And being a mom, I had to decide to be a mom and take care of my kids. Yeah. And I put my dreams and all the things that I desired and wanted to the side. Mm. I did. Um, and did what I had to do. Mm. Now that I'm a little older, I picked back up a little bit um, of what, I want to do, do because yeah. now my two older or older kids are old enough to, to take care of themselves. Sure. So I don't feel as much pressure to try to do this and do that. I only have one more left. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I have a little bit more freedom, just a little. Mm -hmm. um, and I can kind of dibble dabble in the things that I never finished. Mm -hmm. um, and that's where I picked back up something that I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. um, I've always wanted to be an entertainer and do <laughs> entertainment. Those of you guys that know me know I've always, you know, danced. I've always loved music. Um, I remember being in my mama's, um, one of her extra rooms in the house. Mm. Um, and my sister at that time had a boyfriend that was into music. Mm. And he had the equipment in, the, in this room in the house. And I would go in there every day mm. and write music and poetry and record my raps and record music. And a lot of people don't know a lot of stuff about me <laughs> that I did. Wow. And I look at my nephew, uh, Marquise, and I just look at how he has a lot of ways that he probably didn't even know his auntie had. Yeah. And there's a lot of gifts, you know, that 
you in, inherit that you don't even realize until you sit down and talk to somebody yeah. and find out what they did and how. I don't even know if some of even my kids even know some of the things that I've done or did because yeah. they weren't here yeah. at that time. Yeah. And it, it's 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 amazing. It's, yeah. it's really amazing, you know, that I can now dip back into what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. So I've also started a shoe line mm. um, and a brand. Mm. It's called Carnegie's Craft. Mm. I've done that as well. And this is something that I'm doing now, still mm -hmm. doing. And it should be hitting the um, uh, magazine soon, November this year. Yeah, November. Yeah. And I have a couple of different colors and different things of that nature. And it's all leather, 100%. I'm proud of that. Mm. Um, and it's a lot of little things that I'm dibbling and dabbling in that, I, that I'm, I'm doing. And, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's funny how some people inherit certain things from other people, you know, it's crazy because, um, a lot of people don't realize you get that influence from somewhere. It's in you somewhere. It flows through you somewhere. And another thing is, and I always, uh, reiterate this, a couple of my guests have been incarcerated and, I tell them this, well, I always say this, like, and it's kind of, <clears throat> it kind of fits what you're saying too, like, you know, it's never too late to start fresh, start over, because mm -hmm. it's just like, things happen, life, ha life happens, and, you know, God, if God grants you an opportunity to get past that, to still have a passion to do what you want to do, just do it, and it's like a lot of people don't understand that. So, for uh your shoe brand uh what was the inspiration for that and uh basically where did you get the idea from well going back to when i had my store the mm -hmm. boutique the nail shop the hair salon and she, mm -hmm. my thing was to i did this big fashion show in Williston, and those people probably remember it. I put on a fashion show at the high school, mm. and I had the models do a modeling thing, and then I did one at the women's club, mm. and they had on the the blue hair, the the neon hair, the orange hair, mm. and the outfits. Um, my cousins Rika Shika them was the participants in it, <laughs> and um, I it was different. Nobody was doing that yeah. back then, and I enjoyed it. Yeah. It was like bringing Hollywood to a small town. Mm. And this was back then. And sometimes I look back at the stuff that I was doing and I'm seeing it now. Mm. The hair. Yeah. They selling this hair like wildfire. And I'm like, and I was doing that already. Mm -hmm. You know, but there was no Instagram. Yeah. There was no Facebook. Yeah. There was no fa social media back when I was doing it. Mm -hmm. You know, and now the new generation has more tools yeah. to be able to get their business up and running a lot better than word of mouth and driving like two people houses and going and pulling and opening up my trunk to show mm -hmm. people my shoes, opening up my trunk to show people my outfits, opening yeah. up my trunk to show the hair, the wigs and all the different things. That's what I was doing. Mm -hmm. I was hustling going from place to place. Mm -hmm. Now you could take a picture and or do a video and upload it on Instagram or Facebook. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. They did not have that. So that's why I said the, the tools are here yeah. for the people to do it better and easier, the young people. Yeah. Because if I could have did what I did back then with none of those tools and I made good money, they can do it now. Easy. I ain't no telling what they can do. Now. It's 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 amazing, you know. And, and I I think a lot of people don't have like uh, I guess you could say the business etiquette down, because like a lot of people see people doing it, but it's a criteria. What well, not not necessarily criteria, but 
it's a way that you have to do it. You have to have a certain kind of mindset and you got to do things a certain way to get it accomplished. That takes a business mindset to get it done. Even if it's promoting whatever it is, it's a certain way that you have to do it. And a lot of people don't understand that or they don't know it. And it's a process. It's something that you either inherit or you have to learn. It's not nothing that's going to come to you. Mm-hmm. And um, I just uh, find it really amazing that you were able to do that without that. And we're going to play Hindsight's 2020. So if you were able to have those things back then that you have now, like the social media outlets, what do you think would have been different for you? It would have been a lot easier, probably. Mm. Um, and like, like e- easier how? Because like, only reason I'm asking you this is because for somebody who who has already done it, were in a time where they didn't have that, mm-hmm. like the the mindset that you would have now, knowing that you have these outlets now, like to help somebody else get there. Now, now that they have these things. Okay. Use them. <clears throat> use them. Use them in a positive light. Mm-hmm. You know, some people use the, the social media network negatively. Mm-hmm. I think you should use it positively. Mm-hmm. And if you're trying to network businesses and um, products and mm-hmm. things of that nature, or, e- or either just educate mm-hmm. somebody, um, you can use that platform. Mm -hmm. social media to get yourself out there Mm -hmm. to get the the picture out there the product out there Mm -hmm. because like for instance with my shoes Mm -hmm. if i wasn't able to post the shoe on Mm -hmm. instagram or facebook Mm -hmm. i would have had to do what i did back then Mm -hmm. i have not went to no one's home Mm -hmm. and knocked on nobody's door and opened up my trunk Wow. To show people my shoe. Wow. It's been done on social media. And mm-hmm. I'm home at, in my house. I take the pictures and do all the editing and everything in my house with mm-hmm. my either cell phone or camera. Mm-hmm. And I'm using a computer, you know, to edit or do whatever I need to do to get my shoe out there mm-hmm. from inside my house. I don't have to have a building. Mm-hmm. You know, back then I had a storefront. Yeah. And everybody is saturated now, the market. Yeah. You know, and you and the storefront was overhead. Mm. I had to pay a rent every month. Mm. Right? And mm. when I had to have products sent and shipped and I had to drive to Georgia, I had to drive to Tampa, I had to drive and meet these people and network. Now you can network on social media. Yeah. I'm networking without coming out my house now. I yeah. used to drive Same. four or five hours. Yeah, yeah, to network. Yeah, I used money. To, yeah, I used to go to these um black entrepreneur um parties mm-hmm. they would have in Georgia. I used to go to the Bonner Bonnery um Bonner's Bronner's hair show in Atlanta, Georgia mm-hmm. every year, sometimes twice a year. Mm-hmm. Just to see what's new, you know, with hair and all this different stuff mm-hmm. to to see what I can do next, mm. you know, because it wasn't just about hair in there. They used to do things with products and all kind of things. So I've always wanted to have a brand mm-hmm. because I just love doing this. I've been doing it for some a, a while mm-hmm. and nobody was doing none of that stuff. Nobody was riding around selling nothing out of their trunk mm. in the 90s. Yeah. That right. was me. Yeah, that was me. MFG Productions, where visual communication is everything. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel and also follow on Facebook and Instagram.